Mike Check 95 with another Mike Check Productions Mike Check movie review. I am here without my cohorts this time because this review has been postponed on our schedule for at least several weeks, and I think it's now time for me to get the review done and out of the way. So the review that I am doing today is for our Spider-Man series, going into with Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man must battle and defeat Dr. Octopus, while also dealing with his own issues of fading powers and self-doubt. This film was set two years and two months after the first film. Now, the numbers of this film. Critics rate this film a 9.3 out of 10, and audiences rate this film an 8.2 out of 10. The budget for this film was $200 million, and box office back $789 million. Now, when it comes to trivia and goofs, Tobey Maguire performed his own backflip over the car 24 minutes in when he's riding his scooter and he flips over the car. Um, Sam Raimi had a, another take of it with a stunt double doing the, uh, the backflip as well, but he preferred Maguire's backflip as it felt more natural. Stan Lee's original cameo was reshot. His original cameo was him crying out to Spider-Man who had supposedly looked like he stolen some pizzas. So Stan Lee was supposed to say, hey, he took that guy's pizza. But due to issues that were with the um, original shot and everything, his cameo was reshot to make it more legendary and more um, Stan Lee-like. Not during the film, except for the very end in like a, I guess you can say a uh, mental breakdown scene with Harry Osborn, William Defoe cameo during the filming of this movie. I want to thank Harry Osborn and Osborn Industries for providing it. Goofs, really not much for that I could find. Uh, a lot of continuity errors, like Spider-Man's mask getting being randomly thrown off to the side and it magically just shows up in a different area or it's right back in his hands somehow. There's a lot of audio sync errors that I personally couldn't find myself, but there are so many on the page that I didn't really feel like pointing out a bunch of them at the same time. But one that I noticed that was very interesting, it was very, um, I guess, stood out in between the continuity and audio sync errors, was there is a visible boom mic during the delivery scene. I personally couldn't see it myself, but if you guys can freeze frame it and find it for me, and let me know the timestamp, put that in the comments below. Before I get into my thoughts on the film, if you happen to enjoy this review and all of our other content that we put on the channel, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, join the madness as that is Mic Check Productions. I feel like that this film does a really good job of showing the true battle between the lives of Peter Parker and Spider-Man. Where Spider-Man, it's like it's super easy just to show up in the nick of time and save somebody and everything. Whereas it's hard for him to become a normal person like Peter Parker, like going to class on time. Always running late for that. He was always late for his, uh, his job. He was late to theatrical events that Mary Jane would invite him to. Um, it was portrayed very well in this movie. and. Honestly, a great improvement from the last film, I believe. As always, Jameson is still amazing. Like, they picked the perfect guy to play Jameson in the series. I still believe that this is still the best portrayal of Aunt May. She has the look, she has the best presentation, and it just, she feels natural as an Aunt May. Dialogue has improved in this film. It's still a little touch and go and iffy here and there in some spots, mainly with the scenes with Mary Jane and Toby, which course, Toby's just trying to make it seem like it's awkward, like an awkward geeky nerd that he's playing as, but I mean, it's just a little iffy here and there, but it has improved a lot throughout the movie. Great actor in Alfred Molina. If I, if I mispronounce that name, I apologize. He played Doc Ock to a T, and it was perfect in this film, and for the message and the representation that he was given was also pretty amazing. Now, I said this early in the movie, and it did get a little rough ish there at the end, but for its time period, the CGI was greatly improved two years later in the series. Like for nowadays standards, and he's a little rough and whatnot, but for the technology they had back then, and for a kid like me at the time, wouldn't even notice it, but the CGI is amazing. Um, two more things about Doc Ock, um, the design of his mechanical arms are amazing, the hospital scene 
has amazing horror elements thanks to Sam Raimi. I would love to see a twist of this Doc Ock with Sam Raimi as a horror movie. That'd be freaking awesome. And Doc Ock's monologuing and talking to himself and the voices in his head was also done very well. The scene where uh, Parker tells the truth to Aunt May about what happened to Uncle Ben just, in a good way, just sucks the air right out of you. And you're just left like, holy shit, the emotion in this scene is just... God, you can feel it, like, just punch you in the heart, and you're just like, ugh, it's like, you can feel the pain, but you, you know he has to do the right thing. And, of course, the train scene, the basically the last, like, 30 minutes of the movie, wherever the train scene starts on, is just, oh, it's awesome. It's great. I love it. The action's great. Storytelling is great. The Him stopping the train is always legendary. It's been used for so many videos and whatnot. And the fact that he's able to just talk to Doc Ock about changing his mind about basically destroying half of New York with his science project and it's just it's it's great and like I, I love this movie just for that but there are some cons and some of these are a little bit of nitpicks um, in the very beginning where uh, Parker comes in it's like his birthday party and whatnot Aunt May Mary Jane and Harry Osborn uh, Aunt May and Mary Jane go to the kitchen, and Harry starts talking to Peter about Mary Jane, about like, hey, she's waiting for you, like she likes you and everything, and whatnot, yada yada, and she's clearly within earshot of the doorway of the kitchen, so it's like she can hear everything that he's saying. That was kind of weird. There's a weird water mirage transition in this film when it goes to uh, Doc Ock's like secret lair, like the broken down like. <laughs> Uh, tower or church and whatnot. So at the ball party, um, the girl who announced uh, Jameson's son, one of his nicknames she calls him is the Delicious, which I thought that was kind of no, no, he didn't do that. And like I said, in the goofs, um, his mask tends to disappear and reappear randomly in the, throughout the movie. It's, it's like magnetic to his hand, I guess. The atmosphere of New York City is portrayed very well in this film. I thought this was interesting. Um, the fact that Spider-Man's powers are based off of, based off of faith in himself and like just his faith in general and like what he like what drives him to be Spider-Man. I thought this was kind of interesting because I don't think it's ever been done in the comics before. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but um, yeah, it's weird that you can just lose mutant powers you get from a spider if you just don't believe in yourself. That's like that's like Green Lantern status without having to wear a ring. It's just because it's it's not an inanimate object. It's in your system. So I thought that was kind of weird, but also kind of cool. I I guess. And the last comment I have here is the, the my back scene is actually a nod to his back issues he has during filming. Uh, it's said that he broke his back during one of these movies, and he had a lot of complaints about it. And I heard he was kind of difficult to work with too, but. That was a nod and kind of a, a, a rib towards his back issues he has during these movies. So those are my thoughts on Spider-Man 2. A lot of great things, some little things here and there that are not so great, but a lot of improvements when it comes to the first film, this being a sequel. This is one of the greats of many few sequels that are better than the original film and it still stays in that category in my eyes. I honestly realized after watching this film that out of the Maguire series, this is the least watched film I have out of three of them, which I don't really understand why. I mean, I've seen the original 10,000 times because I used to watch that VHS tape religiously like six times a day before the VHS tape pretty much ate itself. And Spider-Man 3 I watched a lot of times because, I mean, Venom and whatnot until I got older and realized how bad it is. But it's like a hidden forgotten gem that I didn't realize that it was really good until I actually watched it again. And now I kind of feel bad that I haven't watched Spider-Man 2 as much as Spider-Man 1 and 3 and I wish that I did. I'm gonna go with the 9.2 because this film is pretty fucking solid when it comes to being a superhero comic book movie and just it's a fantastic, great sequel, and everyone can agree with me on that and die on that same hill for those who don't really think this film is great. That's very few selective.
amount of people. But 9.2 for my final rating of Spider-Man 2. Before I close out this video, I would like to say again, if you enjoyed this review and hearing my thoughts on Spider-Man 2, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. All the stuff to our channel. Join the madness. Keep up with us at all times. We do movies, games, uh, mashups, vlogs, pretty much a little bit of everything at this point. I have lost track of, of what we all do in the channel now. Basically, basically just random stuff that we just come up with and just do it on the day of. But the next time you shall see me, at least, and hopefully my cohorts, or maybe somebody new, for this Spider-Man series, we'll be going into the territory of Spider-Man 3. And that'll be the final Tobey Maguire film before we get into the Andrew Garfield films. But until then, this is Mike Check 95 and we are, more like I am, signing out.